Hey, hey photographers. According to Consumer Tech Association, about 55% of Americans own a digital camera. Then, according to the Closet Innkeepers Association, about 75% of those cameras are safely stored in closets. <laughs> Joining me today is Paul Chatto, the creator behind the Peter Paul Chatto YouTube channel and the funny host of Science Tech Stand Up. Now, we're going to see if we can convince you to bring your camera out of the closet. Paul, right. do, you, do you understand? I agree. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Do, do you do you understand why people keep their cameras in the closet? I don't think it's intentional, but I, I think okay. it's right next to their their uh, signature um, Eric Clapton guitar that they also haven't touched in ten years or thirty years since they <laughs> tried to learn how to play guitar. So and the they're, fondue they're, set they got at their wedding. Correct. They're yep. all in the same sargasso sea of lost equipment. Closet. The, the Bermuda closet triangle. <laughs> Correct. With my Bermuda shorts. But we're not going to talk about guitars. Or I am shorts. a bad guitarist. Or, or shorts. Or uh, Bermuda. But we're here to talk about, uh, or Bermuda. We could. We could talk about shooting in Bermuda. But we're here, I guess, to talk about people stowing their cameras away in their closets and not really ever using them again. Well, that, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a concern. I, and, and so uh, I was thinking that maybe our viewers need help using a camera. So please okay. go to your closet and, and bring out your camera. And then before this video is over, you'll be creating photography magic. Once again. Once again, yeah. Well, let's start by making sure you have everything you need. Pa Paul, what is the essential uh, list here for a photographer? Like clearly you need a camera. Uh, right, probably, that's a good start. You're probably, you're very clever. You're that's, good. I'm. That's why I do this show with, with you. With the basics, yeah. <laughs> uh, make sure the battery's charged. Ah, uh, yeah. That actually, you have uh, found your batteries. You might have <laughs> lost them, and that could be why they're or, in the closet. The cameras or in the, closet. the charger. Or the charger. Uh, that's right. And you've just given up. Yeah. Uh, all of those things can be replaced, but. True, but they've, they, they haven't had, it's because of inertia, they've just never bothered to do it. Yep, so is, is that everything you need? Yeah, so we need a uh, lens, of course, yep. and usually, I guess we're, we were talk, talking earlier about uh, concentrating on cameras that would normally come with a kit lens. Right, yes. So we've got battery, lens, camera, let's go out and shoot, kids. Right, well, so the, I, I guess, do any people get hung up on finding the on-off switch? What's the, is that a? No, I don't think like, so. No, that, that's good. So, so then what's the right way to hold a camera? Well, well, well before I we have a proceed, I, I, would, I, I would probably, that would not be a bad idea. Uh, I, I would say that maybe there's even some people with those, you know, uh, you know uh, T4Is or something like that, that yep. era of Canon, very popular camera, and it's similar ilk, uh, maybe they've still got the footage from their trip to Bermuda on it, or the, the stills on their right. memory card, and they haven't taken it off. So here, yeah. And, and that, that's an idea. And I, you know, all kidding aside, I bet you those people exist out there, and they're afraid to use the camera just in case they wipe out the pictures that they've got on their memory card, and they either don't know how to transfer it to their PC. I, 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 you know what? I think they know how to transfer it to their PC. That, that's a silly comment. Right. But they haven't done it. Right. Or they're uh, actually using the memory card as their storage device that they, you know, that, that, that they don't want to delete the files from the uh, SD card because then those files would be gone. So maybe, you know, you, you so need to So one thing you a, need is, a, a yeah, that's it. Perfect. See, there you go. Just ignore the memory card that's in the, your camera, in the closet, and just get a brand new memory card and start fresh and, and don't yeah. suffer from that anxiety. Well, I put it away somewhere safely, I think. Yeah, and I do know people who don't transfer their pictures to their computer and uh, they shoot a whole bunch of stuff on a card and then put the card away right. and don't label it. <laughs> so so can, can you kill time for 30 seconds while I go get sure. a camera? I'll, I'll, I'll sure. be right back. Hold I could on. have been talking about memory cards. 
And then uh, more than likely the memory card that you've got in the camera in the closet was probably one that you bought when you first bought the camera and maybe not adequate for holding a lot of pictures. So I use a 228 gig dual cards when I'm seriously shooting stuff that I don't want to, uh, I don't want to lose. Uh, valuable stuff. Not this episode. This episode, uh, this card could crap out and I don't care. I just, <laughs> you know, tell Martin that I, sorry, my footage got screwed up. So, are you back? I, I'm, I'm just back. Uh, here we go. <laughs> oh, you're no, back. I have a camera. Yes. There you go. Uh, this is the, uh, this, is my, th this is my, this is my, Canon 50D. Ah, uh, so it's I, I like this camera because it's the only camera that I own now that doesn't take video. <laughs> <laughs> and and that you know it seemed like to me that was a good reason to keep this a little bit older model. It still works fine. It doesn't have what was this 12 megapixels I think, which is and, which uh, is damn fine. I think the yeah. The our, my T4i is 16 megapixels and it takes absolutely stunning pictures. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, even if the resolution of the camera in your closet might not be, you know, 20, 24, that's the huge these days, uh, you know, 12, 16 is good, usable. So why have people put their cameras in their closet? Maybe they didn't like the pictures that they, they took. Maybe they bought a camera that was maybe somewhat deluxe and they thought it was, they were going to turn into a brilliant photographer and then the beach photos just didn't turn out the way they thought uh, yeah. they should. And so they put it away because they're just no longer inspired to take photos. May, may, probably because they don't know how to take photos. Well, I, I think that there's a little bit of that. But most cameras have auto modes and th that makes it pretty easy. So if you can find, so first of all, holding the camera, put one hand under the lens like this, and then the other goes here on the, the shutter dial, and that will get you a pretty uh, steady uh, photo, whether you're shooting through the viewfinder or using the um, LCD screen. Now on this camera, this DSLR, you can't shoot with the LCD screen. Well, I right. Think Maybe there's a way to do that with a live view, but I never bothered to do that. Well, I've also noticed that people who just take holiday snaps or family snaps stand too far from their subjects. Yes, so that there's... And, right. Yeah, there's, then it's just the people are tiny in the, in the frame. Right. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know why. Is it from Instamatic days where they, where they got that? aesthetic where people have to be tiny in in the frame I don't know but I think you're right most people don't get close enough uh, to their subjects and I know this from when I hand the camera to someone to take a picture of Kim and myself at some tourist destination often right. you know the, the we're way too small or much smaller than I'd like in in the photo so get close to your subject they're the they're the important part so you're holding the camera like this then probably on the dial somewhere you'll find something that's green or that says auto and auto, right. if you're if you're a little bit intimidated by your camera i think that's the that's the right place to start then the I other agree. the other technique that i um, uh, un underline is for focus which is um, so the camera will focus when you soft press the shutter that that will get the camera to focus on the subject so uh, point the little focus square wherever it is on your camera at your subject soft press and then compose the shot that you really would like to take before pressing the shutter I think that's you know, you know I don't I can't think of a camera that that wouldn't be a kind of foolproof solution to get you a good shot Right. Uh, instead of using what is it, the AF on button or whatever it is, what do you call it? The, oh yeah, the back focus is what. The back focus, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, no, I have a back I, focus I, button on my camera, but yeah, there's nothing. Uh, it, it's true. I mean, I used to do that a lot with my older cameras, where you just half press the the button, get the exposure and the focus set, and then just sort of move it a third of the way or whatever over yeah, just, just to, to get a nicer compose composition. the shot that you want. Yeah. Because yeah. the, your subject isn't always going to be in the center of your, your shot. 
Now, maybe you've got a life partner who doesn't like having their picture taken and they're always complaining. Oh, don't take my picture. Stop Mostly it. I children. look ugly. <laughs> Kid, kids love having their picture taken. Oh, my, both of adults. my children went through phases where they did not want their photo taken. No, but they were teens. <laughs> the, the, right? Those don't qualify as children? No. I, no. Okay. Um, so, uh, but I think that, you know, most people only think of taking photographs, uh, maybe at a wedding. Right, um, special occasions. Right, and when they go on holiday. So what are, how do we help people find inspiration to take, to go out and take photographs when it's not a special occasion? How, how do you find, you know, some creative um, intent, some creative rationale to go out and take photographs at other times? How well, I would say pick up the camera and just go out and take pictures. Uh, yes, and... Um, and do it for a week. So right, every just day. leave it beside take, the front door, take right. it with you, and but but what is it that you should take pictures of? I that, I, I think people have trouble with wow. that. I mean, when uh, I mean, for that's me, a good question. I, okay, so, but I so, mean, I take I take pictures because I want to take pictures, and right. sometimes I'll put it into black and white mode where the screen obviously the the. Uh, viewer is in black and white yeah. uh obviously in raw i mean if you take a picture the jpeg colors. raw you get you get them both right right uh but the jpeg is black and white and i find that when i'm shooting in black and white i'm now uh, attracted to textures and architectural elements and stop signs and things like that that are of no interest to me in color, in color. right so uh I, I don't know you have to develop an aesthetic and a muscle memory uh, I, I, I think for anybody who uh, is maybe going to go on vacation, let's let's not try to turn you into a photographer, but maybe take the camera out the week before you go on vacation and see what kind of interesting things that uh, you can take pictures of. Yes, that, I, I think that that's true. Most people don't spend the week or the time in advance to you know, tr try things out with their camera, that they've waited too long and then under pressure, things don't go well. So I think that uh, practicing, and I, and I know that I, I say this a lot, you know, take pictures until your uh, memory cards are full and your batteries are empty, but that's not bad in terms of getting you to be familiar with the camera and comfortable with the camera. And that probably helps when you are under pressure at the wedding in Croatia, that you are going to be able to take, you know, or safari in Namibia, that you are going to be able to take great pictures. Yeah, it's a challenge. I mean, either you have the passion to take pictures or you, you don't. I, that I don't think you can oh. learn. Really? Right. I mean, uh, I, I love taking pictures, but I'm also mm -hmm. doing video and I'm, I'm composition is always uh, in my in my mind, I'm always composing pictures and images, and yeah. um, and uh, you know when when guests come through the door, I ask them to come through the door again just so they could do it more dramatically. No, I, I don't do that. <laughs> well, and then you take pictures of them coming through the door, and you sell That's them right. on their way out. That's right. These are I go your work it. Photos. Work it. These That's are your huge, photos huge, that I took good. on your way yeah. in. It's huge, just like huge. going to an amusement park at your place, isn't it? I, my my life is an amusement park, but uh, you know, for instance, I do know a, a very world-renowned photographer, and I've known him since Ryerson back in '73, '76, and I've never seen him without his camera ever. Right. He's yes. always taking pictures of something. Well, most of us are not quite that driven. I do like to take a break every once in a while, just enjoy my experience with friends and, and because I, I sometimes feel like um, the camera is a drag on activities because there are things that I want to do there's things that the camera and I want to do and uh, I feel like that's uh, I'm taxing everybody else's patience and do you as a photographer or someone who's interested in photography look at other people's work do you get inspiration even today by going on I don't know pick a pick a photography site Instagram? 
Instagram, yeah, that's that, that's a place. Yeah, that's one one. Although the the form factor for Instagram is the same all the time, but I mean, what's that? Uh, Flickr. Yeah, Flickr's. Uh, I, I post the photographs that I take uh, for my reviews on Flickr. So are you are you inspired by other people's? Oh yeah, most definitely. So maybe that's some place the camera closet person should go for is, inspiration. Uh, yeah, go oh. find photographic in inspiration. Well, the other thing you could consider is to go to a um, museum, uh, sorry, art gallery yeah. or a museum th that often have photography exhibits. I, I go to all That's the ones a great that idea. here in Toronto just to, you know, see what, uh, sometimes it's historical, what, what did photographs used to look like, what did people take pictures of in the past, how did... Uh, that work and how different that is from today. It's so interesting to look at pictures from the very first days of photography and to see a shot of a street in Paris and it looks deserted. The reality is, of course, it wasn't in uh, at the time the photo was taken, but because it took two or three minutes to take <laughs> the photo, everybody yeah. disappeared. So Interesting. Uh, yeah, interesting. so there's, there's lots that's interesting in uh, old photography and and uh, so, so that's a technique I mean you're going to need a super ND filter to get a two or three minute exposure but that's a very interesting uh, uh, technique and those are things that are worthwhile uh, thinking about from the the very early days. So so there are people who photograph in an artistic manner but often what they're doing is just copying what they've seen already uh, there are obviously photographers yeah. who are unbelievably original, like Robert Maplethorpe and, and, and people like that, whose ex exhibitions I've seen and are like breathtakingly spectacular. Yeah. I saw uh, Yuri Deutsch uh, 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 show on um, uh, World War One and World War Two veterans uh, that sort of the last of the era of these people, and you were crying. Uh, yeah. It's unbelievable just how emotional photography. Uh, can be so I mean I took a wedding I did a wedding shoot uh, with some friends many many years ago back when there were still film uh, uh, cameras but I used Instamatic cameras only not my pro pro stuff so I just had like five Instamatic cameras hanging over my neck and I would just take Uncle Arthur thrown up in the bushes and things <laughs> like that now the 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 family everyone the loves parents well the parents hated the photography because I didn't do the you know the bride standing next to the TV with the husband with the glass inside the you know inside the the TV uh, screen uh, but I was taking pictures for the couple not for their right. parents and they just absolutely loved it I mean right. it was a fun 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 book so yes. but a lot of other people are just taking pictures to record something and and I what I find horrible is that they're too far away uh, the pictures are kind of meaningless except as really bad memories of the event <laughs> and right. uh, maybe a little bit of practice to you know if you practiced a little bit to uh, you know tell the Improve. bride and groom to yeah to do it again or tell the priest or the minister or the rabbi saying you know uh, right. can you do that again so I can get the shot from this angle <laughs> and uh, but that's something I think that a lot of photographers overlook is the uh, ability to ask people to just do this again, just to do a take two. Okay, that was fine. Now, yes. I, uh, can, can we try it this way instead? And I think that um, many photographers don't want to be that involved, mm. but I think that I most am. photographers, good photographers I'm, are. I'm a loud mouth. And get, <laughs> this we know. Uh, <laughs> but do, do give direction. That's so a great I, tip. <laughs> not, not during the ceremony, though. Okay, folks? <laughs> Typically, Don't try that during the ceremony. But when, right. you know, when if you've got the bride, uh, you know, trying something on or the girls right. talking to each other. Yeah, don't be afraid to compose them. Yeah, while, while yeah. you're taking candids, I think, is the, the best time, you know. To, yes, to yes. group people C correct. together. Yeah. Um, and so, don't, don't take pictures of people with blazing light through the window. Like, go, <laughs> go the other way around. in their mouth. Yeah, food with their mouth, a giant piece of spinach hanging out. Some, or even if do it with the giant piece of spinach. I would. I Uncle would Arthur, that. there's spinach in your teeth. No. Actually, I would love to do an entire series where I had a piece of like green leafy stuff, and I would every time someone smiled, I would just stick a piece of green leafy thing, and every single person smiling would have a piece have of spinach. Photoshop. Yeah. See, 
Uh, no, yeah, you could do it in Photoshop too. Yeah. But so, it'd be better live. Anyway, yes. So, so there, there's, a good, who, there's some good tips. Right. So for those people who we have not inspired, what are some alternate uses that you would have for a camera that you're not going to take photographs with? What, what can you suggest to uh, our, our viewers today? That I, I mean, it's a great paperweight. The thing's heavy enough. Uh, but but what else can you do? Yeah, how do we get those cameras out of the closet? What's right. what's your suggestions? That's a it's a great question. Yeah, I, you know. And but, is your is your camera? Yes. Oh, hold on, hold on. Is your camera? And I'm talking to viewers of Martin's channel here. Do you have a camera in the closet that you're not using as often as as you want, and you feel kind of guilty about it? Tell us your story. Why why is it in the closet? Yeah, what what ha what happened that you? decided at one moment that you needed a camera and then whatever inspiration took you to the camera store left you when you got home what yeah what you know, happened how, how well, do we help you get restarted event? what's what what's the uh, little push you need to get yeah. get back into the photo game that's a that's a great question yeah i guess we're done I, is that it i think so all right uh, so i should do my extra do your extra. And tell people that I enjoy reading and replying to relevant questions and civil comments. Please bring it on. Share your thoughts. Uh, YouTube recommends that I ask you to subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to produce more videos regardless. Uh, becoming a member helps me retain my non-sponsored hashtag so you won't hear me plugging a product or service. You won't see those annoying mid-roll ads on my videos either. So the join button below makes you an instant member. But please, join the option that feels right for you. Uh, thanks for watching today. Paul, thank you for joining me. Always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you for letting me join you. I didn't know you were falling apart. I wasn't planning on falling apart.